Hi, welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to look at generating the collision event for the player when they collide with the hat, which is the end goal. This in turn will allow us to create the um, the win screen, which allows us to uh, to inform the player that they've they've reached the goal of the game and they've won. Um, so we're going to look at those elements in this video. So to start with then, let's have a little look at the explorer or the player object. So I'm going to come down to my objects and I'm going to select the player object. And um, in here, I've got quite a few events now. There's one more event to go in here, which is a collision event with the, um, with the hat. So I'm going to add the event. So I'm going to add event and I'm going to add a collision, a collision event, which is there. And my objects and I want to collide with the hat, OBJ hat. Okay, so I'm looking here. Okay, um, I'm just going to put um, set um, hat variable to one. Okay, so um, we're going to record now that we've picked up the hat. So once they collide with the hat, the global variable dot has hat. as hat is going to be equal to one okay so when we collide with the hat now that uh, variable will be changed from zero which it uh, it's um, which is set to when we start the game to a one um, whilst we're playing the game okay so the next thing we're going to look at then is um, that was the last part of the, of the of the coding for the actual collision events the next thing that we're going to look at is creating the windscreen. So um, what we're going to do is just close down this player object, give us a bit more room. And this is the uh, the uh, the game object that we've been working with. And so far we've got um, a number of different events. Okay, we've got if we're in the welcome room, then this is the message that's, that's displayed. If we're in the uh, level one, these are the messages that are displayed. Okay, the, the uh, the uh, score and lives. Same thing with level two and level three. And we've also got one that's uh, displayed if um, we have the game over screen. So we're going to um, create a, um, a text draw event for game win. So the first thing I'm going to do is to, is to create a new room. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to create, and I'm going to create a room. And we're going to give this room a name, uh, M underscore game win and we're going to set the uh, size of the room to the same as the others that's 1920 by 1080 we're now going to create the text event so I can close this uh, game win window down and what I'm going to do I'm just going to copy the case game over statement and I'm going to paste it underneath here and this is going to be uh, the game win. Okay, so I'm going to just adapt this statement for my game win. So again, we want to make sure that we change the um, the uh, alignment to center alignment. We're going to use a transform color. I'm going to use different colors to this. I'm going to use um, uh, probably yellow and green. But uh, as we did in the first statement up here we're going to put two lines of text in okay so after the the room width statement we are going to uh, to put the um, the text on the next line down so we're looking at the game win and here I'm going to press enter and I'm going to put the at symbol in so it knows what follows is going to be um, my text okay so game over Okay, I'm going to come down to the next line. No, I'm not, it's not going to be game over. This is going to be um, awesome. Let's put it in capitals. Exclamation marks. Okay, and then I'm going to leave it two lines. And I said, you found... my hat okay now I said that I was going to change the color so I'm going to change the first color 
to yellow. I'm going to change uh, the second color to green. And I'm going to change the last color to green. Don't know what that's going to look like, but we'll have a look when we uh, we get there. Um, I also want to display my uh, my score, so um, I might bring that down because I've put the, uh, that on two lines. So I might bring that down to 400, and that one on 500. We'll have a look what that looks like when we uh, we uh, play the game. Uh, so um, so that's the message that appears when we uh, we we win the game. Okay, so we're going to look at how we code that now, how we check to see whether or not the game has been won or not. So to do that, we're gonna come into the step event again. And in the step events, we've already got a test that takes place when we're in uh, level three, which is if the global lives is less than or equal to zero, then we're gonna to go to the game over. We also want to do a second test whilst we're in this, uh, this room, because level three is the only place where the hat exists. So what we want to do is to, is to run a check to see if uh, the variable global dot has hat is equal to one. Okay, if it is, then we're going to move to the game win screen. So before we have this break statement, which tells us uh, the, the the program or tells um, game maker when the um, case statement finishes, I'm just going to press enter and I'm going to put in here another if statement. So I'm going to put in if open a bracket global dot has hat is equal to one. You remember when you check in if something is equals to something. If you check in uh, check in that uh, a value is equal to something, it's a double equals symbol. So I'm going to go equals one. So if the global has hat is equal to one, and we're going to come down, we're going to open up the curly brackets, and we're going to put in here room underscore go to open a bracket and we're going to go to the the rm underscore game win okay and we're going to put a semicolon on the end to finish that statement off and then we're going to close off that if statement with um, the curly bracket wrong one curly bracket okay so what we now have in room three it checks to see if global lives is less than or equal to zero if it is, it goes to game over. If the global lives are not equal to um, to zero, it's going to do another check in this in this level to see if we have the hat or not. If we do, then it's going to go to the game win screen. Okay, so um, let's see how that works. Okay, on testing my game, I have realised that we have an error. So that's uh, that's handy because. Um, Whilst we do game testing, it's important that, uh, that we fix any mistakes, obviously, that we um, that we find. But what's also important is that you document um, the mistakes that you find. So the mistake that I found is, if I, um, I've changed this level slightly to speed this up, um, is that when we coded our um, moving between rooms, at the time, we only looked at moving between the first and the second level, not between the second and the third. So I've opened my lock, and now when I go through my exit, nothing happens, okay? And the reason being for that is that um, we haven't finished the code for it. So um, what I'm gonna do is to go back and, de well, I'm, de I'm debugging this now, so uh, we're gonna go back and, and add that in. So what I need to do is to come onto my, um, my workspace, and I'm looking at the um, object exit, which is where we have the collision event with the player. So you can see that we've got a switch room statement with a case statement uh, where when we uh, collide with the player, if we're on level one, then we go to level two. But we haven't told it what happens when we collide with the exit object if we're in level two. So all I'm going to do is to copy this statement and I'm going to come down to the uh, and, create, and, and paste that in to create a second statement. And now I'm going to say, if I'm in level two, then I'm going to go to room level three. So I'm telling the program where to go if I hit the exit statement and I'm on level two. So let's test that just to make sure that now works. Okay, so I'll run through the game very quickly. 
So we need to be going up to the exit. I've got the key. Let's see what I can get here. Get rid of this monster. There we go. Got the key. And I'm going into level two. I got the key. I got the exit. And now I've clicked level three. And there I am. Okay. So again, I've changed this level slightly. So I'm going to go through the whole maze to test whether or not when I get my hat, whether it takes me to the windscreen. So let's find out. So I'm going to move towards the hat and it takes me to the windscreen. Um, I have a little bit of an issue in that I think this gap here is quite big so I might take that out um, because it's squashing this second line close to my uh, my final score. So let's take that out and uh, let's go back to my workspace and I'm going to take out this blank line here. Um, and let's run the game again very quickly. I've changed the layout of the game so that um, I can get there quickly. And here's my end screen, and that looks much better, okay? So um, one thing I haven't done, though, is to program in, press enter to, play, to try again. Okay, so we haven't got that done, so let's do that next. So um, we're going on the um, step event. Okay, so we can copy uh, these case statements here again, because this is uh, the uh, if enter is pressed, paste it in. And if uh, I'm in room game win, then I can restart the game. So this should be the final bit of the code I need to complete the game uh, to make it workable. So let's just test that very quickly again. Okay, press enter to start the game. One exit, two exits, three exits, brilliant. Press enter and I'm back to the start. So I've got a fully working game. Um, so um, what we're gonna look at in the next video is creating sound. So we're gonna create um, a simple backing track, um, some sound effects, and uh, we are then going to code those into the game. Um, so I'll be in the next video. So thanks for watching.